Hey guys, Rob from Effort Dungeon Tiles and today I want to go through a new crafting tutorial to show you how to build a Warcraft inspired orc watchtower which is pretty awesome um, the build turned out really really well, I'm really pleased with it it's even got a removable roof with some little chests and stuff in there I'm not sure if you can see that aim it to the light yeah, really cool build, really enjoyed making it I'm going to break down the video into three parts, I think, so that I can show you the main construction, the roof and all the little details, which I think, like the walkways and things like that, which I think will be really useful, and then finally, the painting and flocking, um, so that you can just get a really good feel of how you do each technique and what you can use and bring to your own builds. But yeah. Turned out wicked, especially the roof, like the, the thread work through there just looks amazing. Really pleased with it. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to cut up some sections using balsa wood to build our four boxes. These boxes we're going to use as the kind of thick oak timbers that hold up the tower. So here I'm cutting up some fairly thick, if, if, if you can get some thick stuff it's going to work better, but fairly thick balsa wood so that you can carve the edges on it. So we need four lots of this. We need um, some thinner strips and then some thicker strips so that they create a square or a rough square they don't have to be exact because we're going to carve them down on the edges anyway but if you make them all the same size you'll end up with more of a rectangle Okay, so we've got our pieces. I've just skipped ahead a little bit. You don't want to watch me just cutting up balsa wood. You can see how I've got those thin strips and then the slightly wider strips. And I've done four lots of these so we can glue them all together and they'll they'll create really nice timbers once we're once we're done. Sort of like kind of like if you imagine fallen trees, like a full oak oak beam or something. And here I'm gluing them up. So I just glue them kind of flat faces they don't need to hold any structures so they don't need to be that strong here I'm doing the base that will sit on top of these timbers I made it a little bit small to begin with so you can see I've just just made that a little bit bigger but effectively it's a hexagon and then um, we just cut that out I'll just skip ahead from this bit because effectively I'm just cutting out that hexagon. Just cut that last corner off. And there we have it. Nice little hexagon. Um, this is using um, the sort of chipboard like grey card I think it's called in the UK. I just bought a load of this from Amazon at some point it's really useful for loads of stuff it's really strong it it will warp if you kind of like bend it and stuff but when it's up and it's in structures that's when it's really useful okay so here what I'm doing is I'm drawing a smaller hexagon inside the bigger one and then I'm measuring the distance between those lines that you can see so that when I create these panels for the walls they'll kind of create sort of like half if you think of half of a dice that sort of shape so they'll actually splay out towards the top which would be really cool that that will just make the the hut kind of look a lot better than if you just did it flat sides so there we've got our six pieces you can see how they're sort of how they're going to go round and here what I'm doing is I'm just getting a mini um, just to sort of see the rough height of what the kind of door would be and I want to make it a little bit taller because the uh, ogres and like orcs and things like that are going to be a lot bigger like the ogres are probably not going to fit through but as long as it doesn't look stupid then that will be good 
Okay, just using this disc that I've got. I do freehand this because I, I realise that the disc is like way too big, but I kind of draw it in initially so I've got a rough shape to work with. You don't have to be too accurate with this, but I started off being accurate and when we add the details later on you can see why you don't actually need to be that, that accurate with it. You can see I decide to go straight up as opposed to going off at an angle, which I think look good in the end. Okay, then we just cut this out. It's a little bit awkward to cut, but um, as long as you've got a sharp blade in there, you shouldn't have any problems. You can see I'm pressing in a little bit heavier there. I should have my blade at more of an angle really, because that will be easier to cut it, but because it's a corner, it's harder to have your blade sort of at more of a shallow angle because you have to, to turn. Okay, I'll skip forward. You don't need to see me uh, <laughs> cutting, cutting cardboard. Okay, so there we go. We've got our pieces. They're all sort of sized correctly, and you can just see kind of I didn't quite get the camera on it, but you can just see how they're going to sit, and they're all going to sit along those lines and then meet up together. So effectively all I'm doing is I'm not putting any glue on the bottom, I'm just putting it on the sides so that when when I go to meet these up I can just glue the sides together and then I can position and glue all of them in one one full sweep. I've used a lot more hot glue when I, pos when I glue it to the base as well. It's really useful to kind of come up with a basic structure using stuff like foam board and cardboard because even if you want to end up with a different looking texture it's it just makes it way easier so you'll see later on when we do the wooden planks on around the edge the base is all, all this cardboard you could try and just do the wooden planks coming out the side which you know it's it's not impossible but it just it's fiddly whereas when you create kind of a solid structure or a solid base using cardboard it just it allows you to add those details on a lot easier okay so I'm just adding the door on that looks pretty good and then this is where I'm adding a lot more glue on so that I can just make sure that that's really secure in there Hot glue works really well on this cardboard as well. Then just make sure I don't put any where the door is going to go. And then effectively just squash that in and position it to the shape that I've drawn. And it's, yeah, you can see where the, the kind of the arch or the um, slant going outwards at the top. It's going to look really cool when we're done. I just make sure there's no sort of massive thick blobs of glue and I just kind of wipe it up into the walls a little bit. We're going to cover that anyway so it's not too much of a problem. I'm just going around the outside now. It's always a good idea to try and clean up the hot glue if you can. Sometimes it doesn't take paint well depending on which which type of glue you've got. So if you can clear up as much as possible, then I recommend doing it. And there it is. So that's going to sit on top of the timbers that we're going to make now. So hopefully your timbers should be dry. I think mine were still a little bit wet because of doing the tutorial, so they weren't quite quite ready. But So all I'm doing is I'm taking off the corners and leveling any of those edges so you can just about see that there's a high edge that doesn't quite meet the other the other piece so I just keep continually kind of going round it rounding off those edges taking any bits out so that we end up with a really cool looking kind of tree trunk um, which is a really cool technique I, I really like it um, I just sort of thought ah, the, this would work really well actually and I might do a, I might do a tutorial making some trees using it as well because that'd probably be pretty cool. So you can see where I've just gone round the edges, I've carved it round so it looks like a round trunk instead of the sort of square. 
and I've made four of those as well so I've just taken them off I did sand them a little bit to take off any other weird sort of straight cuts but any any very minor so effectively what we're going to do is we're going to position them just sort of in the middle of the heart underneath but going out at an angle so they're going to go out sort of both ways so they're going to head perfectly out and you can see I've cut these angles so that when we glue them on they'll sit they'll naturally sit at that angle going outwards um you might want to be more generous with the hot glue than I was one of these did fall off so I had to put another, I had to put some more on so those are all done that's our main structure and now we're going to add just a couple of supports going across so I've got this thicker kind of balsa wood and I've created four of them that are, that are going to go between each set of legs and I'm doing the same thing I'm rounding off the corners so that they look like kind of thick fallen branches or um, smaller fallen trees and they've just been cut down and used so I round off the edges and then I put some like uh, you, the trick really is to be really really rough with this um, so that you get some nice variation and then what I do is I not to a perfect point but I kind of cut to a point the ends so you can see you end up with like that sort of cool like stick and that's what we're going to use to add our detail onto so here's the basic structure and um, yeah find out how we do some more in part two Okay, so I hope you enjoyed part one. The main construction was just kind of showing you basic technique of putting the four pieces of balsa wood together to create the timbers. That's going to be really crucial to a lot of this. And then also sharpening off the, the balsa wood kind of thicker chunks into points because that's the kind of iconic feel to, to sort of orc, Warcraft orc stuff is there's a lot of spikes and it's very like red and aggressive sort of thing. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for part two.